Hey guys, Cody here, and in this video I just want to talk to you kind of about the difference between using stretched and unstretched canvas, um, going through it like painting on it, and actually using it to like sell and ship. So uh, for this example, I'm going to use this painting right here that I did. Uh, this is actually, sorry, uh, this one actually is a 3x5, or sorry, 3x6, three, 3 feet by 6 feet painting, and, uh, and then I have like a roll of unstretched canvas and then I have a painting over here on the wall this is actually uh, I think it's like six foot by four foot or something like that I don't know or maybe three and a half feet but those will kind of be the examples so let's talk about the difference between stretched and unstretched so stretched is obviously where it's already you know it's it's basically the kind that you can buy online or at Michaels or something like that where it's already on a frame, right? So this is the normal type of painting or um, canvas that you would buy is stretched. Um, and then unstretched is where it comes in a roll and you simply buy the roll of canvas and then lay it out and paint on it. So let's talk about some of the differences in painting on that, right? So obviously with stretched, you know, it's already pre-made, so usually they're, they come gessoed, so you don't have to do anything gesso, gesso, whatever it is. Um, so you can just paint right on them right away. With the, um, with the rolls, you can get them either way. You can get them primed or unprimed. Um, some people like to prime them themselves because they use a specific like brand or something like that. I buy primed because I've tried priming and I made a mess and it was a really tedious process and generally I don't need to. So what I'll do now is just kind of put a base layer over the, the gesso, 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 gesso. I'm just going to say gesso from this point. So I'll just put a base layer of paint over the gesso so that it's, it's smooth, right? Um, so let's talk about some of the, the differences in the actual painting process. So this piece you can see is very thick, very thick on paint, okay? And it's kind of a test piece. I wouldn't sell this piece because it's, it's messed up in a lot of ways, but it, it was a good learning piece for me because when I painted this piece, I actually poured the paint, like really wet paint, and just threw it on the canvas. And it looked very cool, but at the same time, it pooled here to the center, okay? So all of this paint pooled into the middle because when you use a canvas, especially the larger the canvas, like the more soft the middle is. Because you've got, you know, these firm edges, but the center is really soft. And the bigger the, the canvas, you're going to see this more um, that, like, it's, you know, it, if you put weight on it, it sinks in. Um, so because I poured all this paint on, it sunk in, and eventually it actually made this huge bubble that would not dry. And so I actually scraped it out and painted it and... Um, now you've got like the image that's there but it was a learning experience so when you use paint you know when you use canvases if you don't put a lot of paint on it it's not a big deal I mean uh, let me see I've got this thing right here so I've got this painting right here I'm just going to use this as an example I suppose um, you know if you use something if you if you're doing a normal painting it's not that big a deal right I have other large paintings that um, you know, that I've painted normally, and they, they turn out just fine. Um, but the, the bigger the canvas, the softer the center. So just something to think about if you do any type of poured painting, the larger, like, the larger it gets, the more it's going to sink in the middle. But even smaller ones tend to do that regardless. So I've seen it even on, like, 2x4s or 2x3s, where it's still, it still has that tendency to sink into part of the painting because of the weight. Okay, so just something to think about. Um, the other challenge with painting on like a large canvas like that is that, you know, there's a lot of artists that do stretched canvas. I, I do mostly already stretched canvas. But, you know, a lot of artists don't like that the edge kind of um, prohibits the painting itself. Okay, so obviously if you have a hard edge, well, you only paint within this. And then you've got the edges to worry about. Um, for some paintings, I will do like a black edge around it. A lot of times I'll just do complementary colors. So all the colors I'm already using, I will just paint the sides of the painting. Um, but, you know, because of that, one challenge that I run into is because I do a lot of scraped paintings um, or scraped type paintings, because this part, the actual canvas part is soft, but then you've got this, this 
firm edge when you get to it to paint it it tends to stop it because what happens is is where it hits the edge there's different pressure right so you've got a lot of pressure here on the edge because it's flat but then you're pushing in on the painting itself because you know you have to apply some kind of pressure i mean unless you you know you do like gestural abstraction where you're not even touching it but my point is is that when it reaches this there's a different pressure like right here because it's soft as opposed to the edge so it, it kind of makes it so that the paint is not even when it goes across that so that's just um a challenge with painting on stretched canvas now let's talk about painting on unstretched canvas i really like painting on unstretched canvas there is a couple of things that you need to, to to know though if you haven't done it before first off um one i like it because it gives you more even colors so with this this piece over here it's it, i probably won't even be able to get to show it to you guys um i mean it won't even let me stretch in won't let me zoom in um but anyway if you could see it, the, the colors kind of go like all the way across um from one end to, to the other but with a normal painting, like when it's um, like this, obviously it's gonna go from end to end, right? But when it reaches the edges, it, it's gonna cut that paint off. Now you could drip it over or you could make a design, but it's not continuous, right? Let me adjust this, there we go. Um, so that's one thing to think about. What I like about painting on like flat canvas, or I mean, sorry, unstretched, is that you can put it flat on the ground or a flat surface and do color all the way across the painting and then once you wrap it those colors will continue onto the side so it's kind of cool because it, it continues that that color um, all the way around the painting uh, the other thing especially for abstract right because then when you wrap it when you when you wrap that canvas around the frame since you painted the whole thing once it's wrapped it's going to take all those colors when you paint on a stretched canvas obviously you can only go to the edges and then you have to paint the edges um the other thing that i um like about it is that you can paint it up on the wall or you can paint on the ground i guess you you can do that with a stretch canvas you, you definitely could um but again it's not flat so you're still painting everything but the edges so it's not a big deal. I do a lot more stretched canvas than I do unstretched, but I still like doing unstretched because you can you can make that color go all the way across the painting, so it's pretty cool. Um, now let's talk about some of the process involved with unstretched. Um, first off, you do have to cut it yourself. So unless you use the whole roll, you know, you've got to cut the painting so that once you have your frame, you can stretch it around that frame. Um, you'll want to leave, usually if you do like gallery style where it's like one and a half inch um, frame, you'll leave three inches around each side of whatever you've cut so that it wraps around the frame. So for example, if you're doing a, like say like this, right, where it's 36 inches by 72 inches, well your painting would have to be 78 by 42 because you'd have to allot six inches extra, three inches for each side, so that when you wrap it around, you know, it has it has enough room for it to be go all the way around the painting and then be stapled in the back. So, um, something to think about. You do have to cut it yourself. You've got to leave the room. Not a big deal. Just as a heads up, you just have to. Um, now, what I will say about um, doing the like the rolled painting is that if you don't stretch it you could just sell it once it's once you've painted the painting and it's dried completely you can just roll up the painting and sell it like that you don't have to stretch and you don't have to stretch it over a frame and sell it like that um you know there are people who are willing to buy it unstretched and then stretch it themselves because the thing with the kind of the advantage to doing like if you're going to do say you were going to do this size right three by six but you were going to do it in unrolled which i've done or pretty similar sizes right um it's kind of advantages to you to do it this way because one it's cheaper to buy unrolled canvas for that size than it is a rolled can like one of these is worth like 150 bucks by itself but i could get a whole roll that's more than that for 100 right so i could actually do two about not exactly but about two of these paintings this size with one rolled canvas 
and it would be a third the price, right? And then shipping is another thing to think about. So when you ship a painting like this, you either have to crate it or you've got to put it in a very well protected box, especially something this size, right? It's a pain and it's expensive. So to ship a painting like this, this is probably like 150 bucks, 200 bucks. Even going through like regular mail to get it to wherever it needs to go, this is gonna be an expensive painting to ship because of the weight and size, right? So that's also something to think about. Like just alone, I would charge $200 for shipping, just for shipping because of like, cause you're gonna eat those costs. Um, but if you ship a unstretched painting and leave it like that, here, let me show you an example. I've got, I've actually got one right here. Well, I've got two. So this is actually a rolled painting um, and it's protected by glass sign paper. Um, and it's, it's got a roll in it. So you basically you wrap it around a roll and then you put it in a, a cardboard tube like this, right? And then you ship it out and that's it. Like it's way cheaper to ship an unstretched painting than it is something like this. Like this monstrosity right here is like, would be hell of expensive. Like just, I think the price for one of these I sell just to make just to break even would be like 400 450 because of the size of the canvas all of the paint that it uses all of the shipping fees it's expensive so it's not cheap and that's something to think about like if you do large scale paintings I, you know the size is ultimately your choice right but what i will say is that larger paintings as great as they look come with bigger challenges so shipping a large painting unstretched is a lot economic, a lot more economical and a lot easier than shipping one of these bad boys, because um, then you got to get a box or a crate that size, and it, sometimes it could be a pain. Um, but that's pretty much it. So, as far as you know, what you should do, or you know, if you're looking into like maybe you do regular stretch canvas and you were looking into unstretched, I would say try it. Like the worst, the best thing about unstretched like paintings is one that they take up less room. So, I mean, you've got this this thing on this wall right here, right? That's that's enormous, right? And just know that I have a stack of paintings this large stacked in my house, right? And you know how much room that takes up? But then this painting right here is almost the same size and look at how small that is. It takes up one shelf. It takes up one shelf on my rack whatever that is just, just takes up one shelf um but that's it so as far as painting goes i like both i do like i do normally stretch canvas because it's easier and it's easier for me to sell them especially i sell medium sizes um on stretch canvas because i already know the box size i already know the price like i already have an idea of that but shipping one of these like somewhere is going to be a nightmare i haven't had to ship one i just sell them. i try to sell large paintings locally so i don't have to deal with that um, but obviously if someone bought one, I would, I would definitely do whatever it took to get it to them. Um, so ultimately that's it guys. Uh, hopefully you really found this video helpful as far as the, you know, the actual painting aspect or, you know, even shipping and selling it. Um, as far as prices go, normally a, I'll sell a unstretched painting half the price of one of these just because of shipping and the frame and the price of the materials i guess it's not about half you know it's not exactly half or anything but it it would let's say for simplicity's sake probably half um just because again the materials and the shipping for a rolled painting is a lot less than something like this um, but that's it hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like uh, leave a comment you know with your thoughts and i'm um, sorry for the shaky camera I'm, I'm not a videographer but i just like to share information uh but if you found it you know subscribe and i will catch you guys in another video take care